This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More from them later. Hey guys, how's it going? Diddy I'm back with another video. And in today's video, we're talking cryptids. More specifically, cryptids from my home county of Norfolk. Because, well, 2023, I might add to the paranormal investigations. I might add a few cryptid hunts. What do you think about that? Hit that like button and let me know down below below. Before I jump into the video, I have a patron of the day to shout out, and today's patron of the day is Becky Hume. So Becky Hume, thank you so much for being a patron. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, then the link is down below. It's as little as a pound a month. You get bonus content. You might be the patron of the day. So if that sounds like something you want to do, link is down below. Okay, so cryptids of Norfolk. So I've just been like looking into cryptids recently. It's something that, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed over the years, and I didn't really realize just how many cryptids there are apparently in Norfolk and it's it's quite stunning there's like a map full of all of the cryptids in this area and there are so so many but there is one village in Norfolk that has no recorded sightings but my mum has apparently seen something in that village and I'm going to do a special video on that where I'm going to go to the location where she allegedly saw something crazy so if you want to see that please let me know down below Low. Right, so for those of you out there who haven't watched my channel before or don't actually know what a cryptid is, which I don't know why you would have clicked on this video, but the official definition of a cryptid is as follows. An animal whose existence or survival is disputed or substantiated such as the Yeti. Now, a little bit like conspiracies, you know, like everything's a conspiracy until it's not, like MKUltra was a conspiracy and then all of a sudden they released documentation confirming that MKUltra was a real thing. Well, very much similar are uh, cryptids in the sense that, for example, the duck-billed platypus was seen for years as a cryptid. You know, as a, not a made-up creature, but like a, you know, a mythological creature, a very hard-to-find creature. And now, it's just a duck-billed platypus, you know, it's, it's just seen as another animal. So, could it be the case that some of these cryptids out there are just kind of waiting to be discovered and verified in an official capacity, more so than being made-up creatures? Who knows? Are there lots of mothmen? Are there lots of yeti? Are there lots of big feet? out there who knows but today we're going to have a look at the mythological cryptids of norfolk so let's jump in to that shout out to the edp this is from a, these these excerpts are from an article in the edp the eastern daily press it's like a local newspaper outlet and so, yeah, I guess go buy the EDP and support the EDP. Thanks to the EDP for this article. I don't know. But anyway, let's have a look at a few of these cryptids. So the first one we have is the Weeping White Ghost Horse in Trowles, Norfolk. A local tale links the tragic story of young woman who fell under the ice on the River Yare during a bitter winter and who drowned as her young son watched helplessly from the riverbank and a ghost. Hang on, that doesn't make sense. Her young son watched helplessly from the riverbank and a ghost. Does that mean like her son was stood next to a ghost? Since the woman's untimely death, several villagers had reported seeing a phantom white horse in the village. A ghost horse that sheds tears. Hang on, right, let me just get my head around this one. So, a woman tragically died, falling under the ice of the river, yeah, which is tragic, horrible. Her son watched, awful. There was a ghost about i'm guessing the ghost of this horse and then ever since several villages so this horse just this ghost horse rocks up crying because this woman fell under the ice and died now i would say like oh maybe the ghost horse is like the woman coming back from the dead in the form of a horse maybe she loved horses but then is this and a ghost that was next to the young son on the riverbank the ghost horse because if that is the case then the ghost horse would have watched the woman die in which case it couldn't have been the woman because the woman was technically alive although dying whilst being watched by said ghost horse I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the ghost horse is not the woman, but somehow is attached to the woman. Goes around crying. Oh, well, there we go. We've got a crying ghost horse in Trous. That's different. Okay, next up, we've got the Bishop Beaver from Babingley in Norfolk. The Bishop Beaver. Well, I mean, a beaver is not a cryptid. 
But I guess if it, this beaver like practices the Christian faith, then I don't know, maybe it's like a mutant beaver. It is said that when St. Felix landed in East Anglia from Burgundy in 631, he arrived at the Wash and began to sail up the river Babingley. Caught in a violent storm, St. Felix's ship floundered in the water and he was saved from drowning, so the tale has it, by a colony of beavers, which guided him to safety. In gratitude, St. Felix sought out the chief of the beavers and consecrated him as a bishop to thank him for saving his life and allowing him to deliver all the province of East Anglia from long-standing unrighteousness and unhappiness. So, I... How? I don't understand how this is a cryptid. I don't want to say, and I'm not... Listen, I'm not a journalist, okay? I'm not slagging off the article at all. All I'm going to say is, this does feel like filler. Not saying that it necessarily is, but beavers do exist. Just because this one was like turned into a priest for some reason doesn't necessarily make it a cryptid, in my humble opinion. But it's interesting that St. Felix, because I actually uh, have a little bit of history with St. Felix, not personally, but the school of St. This is a private school in Norfolk called St. Felix, obviously named after this dude who got saved by a load of beavers, didn't know that part. And basically, I was playing rugby and the hooker on the opposition, which hooker is a position, not like a conventional hooker and he was the son of the king of rohan in lord of the rings and i looked on the touchline and there was the king of rohan watching his son play rugby against us it was very very jarring but I, we did win that game and i scored a try but anyway bishop beaver i mean interesting don't get me wrong bit of history there but is it a cryptid down below bishop beaver are you counting that as a cryptid because i won't before we carry on, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. Use my link down below, expressvpn.com forward slash duty to get yourself ExpressVPN. Why would you want to get ExpressVPN? Well, accelerate your VPN. Enjoy the power of an unlimited bandwidth VPN built for speed. Find out why we're named ExpressVPN. Be anywhere virtually. Choose from servers across 94 countries. Keep your real location hidden from prying eyes. Watch what you want. Access any content, no matter your location. And say goodbye to block services and websites. Browse and download anonymously. Keep your online activity from being traced. ExpressVPN keeps no connection or activity logs. Encrypt everything. Protect your connection from 256-bit AES, DNS, IPv6 leak protection, kill switch and split tunneling. And get help anytime. Email or chat live with our customer support team 24-7. ExpressVPN is here to help. And if you don't like it, it's a 30-day, like, get your money back. Guarantee. So if you want extra protection, if you want to watch US Netflix like I do, then get ExpressVPN, expressvpn.com forward slash duty. Link is down below. Right, now, listen, okay? Obviously, I want to be a, a cryptid hunter, yeah? And I, so far, we've had a ghost horse, we've had a beaver, now we've got the fairy cow of South Lopham, Norfolk. South Lopham in Norfolk boasts a fairy cow, which magically appeared during times of great hardship in the village and disappeared when things improved. So, obviously, right now, let's be honest, we're going through quite a tough time, quite a bit of hardship, aren't we? We're being brutally honest. So, I reckon if I headed down to South Lopham now, probably see a fairy cow for floating about helping with the energy bills and that that is that that's like taking an animal that exists a cow and adding a mythological creature the fairy and combining them i would love to go and interview the people of south lopham about the fairy cow maybe that's a video in the future some like interviewing in public people about their local well fairy cows. This one is very interesting. My auntie has a cottage in Sheringham, so next time I go, I might look into this. The Mermaid of Sheringham, Norfolk. The 15th century pews in the 900-year-old church of All Saints in Upper Sheringham tell the fishy tale of an unusual visitor to the village who has left her mark. On the bench end of the pew closest to the north door is a mermaid carved in wood. Legend says the mermaid was drawn to the church from more than a mile away by the sound of heavenly singing, and despite the encumbrance of a tail dragged herself from the beach to the churchyard. With the service still in full swing, the church beadle unceremoniously slammed the door in the face of the sea princess, leaving her floundering outside. But mermaids are made of stern stuff, and as soon as she was able, she crept into the back of the church and can be still found there today. Now, when they say this mermaid can still be found there today, surely they don't mean, like, they kept the mermaid there until it died, and they have, like, the remains of the mermaid in the church. I think where it says can 
can still be found there today surely is referring to this pew that has a mermaid carved in the wood but I would love to go and I have reason to go to Sherringham because like I say my aunt lives there so maybe I'll take a little journey to this church and just be like look where's the mermaid at I want to see out back I want to see if you've got a skeleton mermaid laying about but very interesting the mermaid of Sherringham there we go the headless donkey of Cranworth Norfolk these are class man like I know that my people from Norfolk get a bad rap for being inbred and that but like we've got headless donkeys fairy cows mermaids beavers like you know it's a great place to be it really is farmer's wife out late at night had heard footsteps behind her and on turning saw a shape like a donkey standing on its hind legs prancing and towering over her in terror she hurried on the footsteps matching her pace finally she reached the safety of her cottage and rushed inside slamming the doors but she couldn't resist looking out of the window to see what had followed her she distinctly saw a headless donkey pass on its way through the starlit night now for me the most terrifying thing about this is not the fact that the donkey doesn't have a head it's the fact that it's walking around on its hind legs that's quite a sight to see i'd imagine that's 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 disturbing i mean anything headless walking around on two legs would be scary but an animal that is supposed to be on four legs doing it. It's creepy stuff. And imagine being this farmer's wife, right? Just for a second. Imagine this actually did happen. And you've just got to think, like, I've got to explain to the world that I saw a headless donkey walking on two legs trying to chase me. You're fucked, aren't you? Let's be honest. Like, you're done. You're just like, well, this is it. No one's going to believe me. Everyone's going to think I'm a complete mental case. And I'm going to be the laughing stock of Cranworth. Norfolk. Nobody wants to be the laughing stock of Cranworth, Norfolk. There we go. Headless donkey. Stumbling around. Two legs. Scary, scary stuff. Tell you what, mate. These are actually class. I'm, I've never been more proud to be from Norfolk in my life. The Phantom Rabbit of Thetford Warren Lodge in Norfolk. It is said that a large, even huge, huge ghostly white rabbit with flaming red eyes guards the doorway to the lodge and is an omen of death to anyone who lays eyes on it. If you look this rabbit in its fiery red eyes, you are fucked. You are dead. You are deceased. You understand me. You will never see anything ever again because you will be brown bread. You will be six feet under and this fucking rabbit will bury you. <coughs> That's the thing of beauty. That's just incredible to me. I know that like ghosts are technically cryptids, but all of these cryptids seem to be undead things. Apart from the beaver apart from the, and the mermaid, but there seems to be a lot of ghosts. But animal ghosts, the phantom rabbit, fucking beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But there we go. What do you think? What do you think about these cryptids of Norfolk? I'm, I'm going to do a cryptids of Suffolk and maybe a cryptids of Norfolk part two. And then in 2023, we're going to head out. We're going to head out to where these places are. We're going to interview some locals. And we're going to see if we can find ourselves some cryptids. How exciting is that? Are you excited for that? Let me know down below. 2023 is going to be a funky year on this channel. Let me tell you that much. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Check out ExpressVPN. Check out my Patreon. And, uh, yeah. If you enjoy cryptids, stick around. Subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you very soon. Sweet one. Geese.